Hello, hello, and good morning, good morning. I'm Annabelle here, and welcome to this roundtable conversation. Um, I'm so honored to be here. I'm gonna make sure I catch the sound and I don't speak with... Um... So, um, welcome, welcome to this conversation about sacred ceremonies and the power of rituals, you know, and how I will let you know how that has changed my life and um, all my other beautiful co-authors from uh, Warrior of Light book are here with me today and to discuss, you know, the power that is hiding in, um, in ceremonies and in rituals. So, um, hi, I'm Annabelle, um, wild and wise woman, life expansion expert and um, it's my third chapter and I'm so honored, you know, to to tell you about my journey and I hope that this will inspire and empower you to, to know how much you can do as well. So, um, yeah, rituals and learning about the power of rituals have changed my life in many ways and I will let you know uh, why. Um, um, yeah, welcome, welcome. And then if you have any questions, uh, let me know as well. Um, so to start, um, I'm just gonna tell you a little story about myself and um, how, what was my awakening um, part. And before awakening, you know, I had to go really low and it's like, how low do we let ourselves go sometimes? And, and so after breast cancer, which was 10 years ago, uh, after my treatment, you know, I was physically well, but emotionally very distraught and, and I went into deep depression. And so I became um, very scared of everything, scared of life, and uh, I didn't know how to ask for help. So I fully recluse myself at home and I was just watching TV all day and doing the minimum at home. And I would walk around my neighborhood thinking, um, What's gonna happen if I keep doing that? What, is that okay to just do that to myself? And I would just go and look after my son and do like just a chore at home, but really, and it was like, is it important what we do every day? Is it important what we do every week? Is it important what we do every month? And, um, yeah, it was very, very sad time. And then, you know, I found myself in a place where it was like, I have to do something about that. And I realized, you know, how important it is what we do every day for ourselves and how what we do every day builds our life, builds our reality, how we can um, create something for the world, how our, we can just isolate ourselves in our little home, in front of our little computer and um, feel just bad, really. So this is uh, my story, you know, to say, yes, it's very important. The little things are very important. And basically that's what I want to bring today. Thank you. So ladies, are you gonna, who's gonna go next? I'll jump in. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I love what you shared there, Annabelle. And, you know, one of my, the things that really keeps like that sacred fire burning within me is actually that exact thought that if, if I'm at home doing my routines, doing whether it's the mundane activities of daily life, mm -hmm or um, you know ecstatic awakening activities but if I imagine and because I actually believe that this is true energetically that the small things that I'm doing in my home and in my life is creating like this ripple effect that goes out to the universe then it brings my attentiveness to the small things and you know 
this is a, this is an incredibly powerful thing because I really believe that the way that we can be one of the most strongest activists in the world is right here at home in our own heart space and in our homes and it does matter what we do behind closed doors you know it matters more than we can ever believe because those uh, energetic impressions that we're laying down in our life have that ripple effect, that echoing effect through the whole universe. And um, so often in our modern world, we think that when we're alone doing our own thing, that we're actually alone. And this is something <laughs> that I, I have really discovered in myself. We are never alone. Not only have we got all of the planetary energies with us and the elemental energies and the nature spirits and the elementals and all the, the all the beautiful beings that walk with us in the world seen and unseen but we also have you know the ancestral and the angelic realms and we have all these realms surrounding us with us all the time so you know that example of you being at home watching television and just feeling like you your life meant nothing um, and had no impact on anyone else. You know, when we pull back the veil of reality to see that, you know, you probably in those moments had this rally of energetic beings around you going, Annabelle, come on now, let's do this. <laughs> and this has been my experience in life that, you know, as we walk in the world, we never walk alone. And I love this topic very much. This is very, very dear to my heart, ceremony and ritual, because it is in those moments when we go into ceremony uh, and whilst we do conscious ritual that we actually acknowledge that we acknowledge the reality that we don't walk alone that there are all these beings that rally in support of of the frequency that we're here to bring to the planet and be part of facilitating and contributing to and um, yeah there's something very powerful about when we pause the everyday actions of our life and we take time to honor that, take time to honor our internal terrain and that energetic terrain that surrounds us constantly. Um, I've got so much more I'd love to share about that, but I'll just pause there to, um, to allow others that space. I might jump in now to follow on from, yeah, I love how you've introduced that ritual space, Zoe. Um, I'm Michelle Mara. <laughs> And I'm a, uh, an embodiment mentor, five rhythms dance teacher and dance movement therapist. So dance is my portal to go into that space of ritual and ceremony and how I lead others. And yeah, that space that you're talking about, Zoe, I think that's the something Yeah, every day of our lives, if we can connect with that space and learn how to find simple ways to connect with that, we can really find a lot of wellness sovereignty in doing that and yes I guess some of the ways what I have found the most beneficial is just morning practices you know like finding morning practices through meditation like as soon as you wake up in the morning you know to get out of that headspace because I think that's what we're the ritual and ceremony takes us out of that everyday head headspace that a lot of us you know when we're in everyday life that's the world that we have to inhabit in a way you know and we're in our head and in our busyness and the ritual and ceremony all these different ways helps us shift from that mental state and anxiety and often our anxious and stressful feelings are actually coming from our head they're not actually coming from that space of connection that zoe's talked about and so how do we connect with that space that that limitless dimension. And I mean, obviously my, my practice is through dance and movement. And yeah, every time we dance together, it is a space of ritual where we shift from the mental state into that heart space, into that space where we are, it's limitlessness. And I mean, the way I see it is, um, and I run a, a Tuesday morning dance every Tuesday morning where we shift from that space into this space. And the way I see it is that through these practices, it's like we're tuned into a radio frequency. This is one radio frequency, our everyday life. And the ritual and ceremony helps us change the radio frequency into 
this space where we're connected to everything. And that's that's sort of the, the dance that I offer, the five rhythms, takes us out of that space. And then at some point in the dance through the map, the radio frequency, the dial shifts where we can go into this space where we see the beauty, we see limitlessness, we see gratitude, we connect with all those elemental beings. And yes, yeah, so I guess dance is my ritual for doing that. And, and of course, there's lots of, you know, some of the morning rituals that I, I do simply, simply meditating, <laughs> simply taking five minutes to just center in your breath just centering I mean I spoke about the breath in the last talk I did just just bringing your attention to your breath and just following the rise and fall of your breath brings us back into the body and yeah I, I have found morning ritual life-changing you know when I begin the day with the morning practice whether it's five minutes of meditation whether it's dancing whether it's walking in nature it just completely shifts my day to to kind of connect with that space that Zoe's talking about before you begin your day and even for five minutes it, it can really change it certainly has changed my life yeah I might pass it on to someone else yeah yeah thank you for that Michelle um, morning rituals has also been changed my life hmm. and it's just the small things really um, okay, yay, Sophie's joining us. So for me, um, I've only recently embarked on this. Like I, I wanted to join this discussion because I wanted to learn from all of you. Because when I look back to my practice, I can't really say I have a fixed one where I have you know, step one until step five. I don't have that. I just feel like I, I go with the flow and I pick up things from, you know, whatever I, I read and other people's ceremonies. And I kind of just apply to what is currently asking me to do. So from that, I have found a, a ritual that's just mine, a morning ritual. Like, okay, sometimes I wake up wanting to meditate first, like I need to ground. And then sometimes it's the, the head is too busy and I had I need to put it down on paper. And once I've poured it all out, like, oh, okay, now I'm clear. Now I can sit for, I can even sit for an hour, but I have to work, you know? And then, it, and then I have, I, I grew up with cacao. Like we, at home, we used to make it. We, I, we used to have a tree. We would get the tree and the kids would eat all the seeds and, you know, you just suck on them. And, and then the, the adults would lay them up for the sun to dry them. And then um, once it's dried, we had this small machine. It's just so tiny. And we would grind, of course, the adults, because I was probably between five to seven years old. And we would grind the machine and just the chocolate would come out. And it felt like now I'm looking at it. It's like, wow, that was a whole ceremony that we were doing. And we would gather around with this, uh, the chocolate and like make balls from our tiny little hands. And that's what we would have every morning. We would, we would actually put cacao in rice and it would be like chocolate rice. We have that, it's, it's very common here. It's champorado, we call it champorado. It's very common and it just actually stunned me um, that I'm seeing other people in um, South America using a cacao ceremony because for us, it was really like an everyday thing. And so now when I do that in the morning, it feels so grounding and also going back to that childhood that like nature has always been guiding us to have those rituals, even when we didn't know it. So I'm kind of just following it now. And now I have um, like an altar for love where it just says um, everything I do is for love. And I put an incense there every morning and it's in the office. So I know that I'm working. I know the intention that I'm doing, whatever it is, whether it's because I'm also doing marketing and you know, I, when you cook for the family that I always have to remember, okay, why did I wake up again today? What is it that I'm doing? What do I want my day to be like? And it reminds me like, okay, this is for love. It's for love. And while talking to all of you and hearing all of you, I feel like our whole life is the ceremony. From a Catholic context, they say, let, let your life be a prayer. But from, from our practices, it's like our whole life is the practice. Our whole life is the ceremony. And it, it's the ritual, right? Like what you said, Michelle, like walking outside, 
we we go we go back to what we've been doing centuries ago, right? Like what Zoe's doing in her in her retreats. It's really we have coming back to that. And I feel like, wow, this is what I'm learning from all of you, from that that wisdom that's coming to me. Yay, welcome, Sophie. Sophie. Did you want to jump in? Do you want to jump in? You're muted, Sophie. Okay, welcome, welcome. It's so nice to have you. Just introduce yourself and you know how um how it's ritual for you. Good morning. Yes, thank you. I um I'm doing a little eh, yeah, I'm sitting at a cafe. I was locked out this morning. It's it was not a question of if it was when. So <laughs> um Yes, my name is Sophie, and I um, I am a um, yoga teacher, but I'm also practicing Kundalini and taking on that journey to become a actual Kundalini teacher as well. Um, rituals, um, I something that I've noticed for me, I haven't heard any. I didn't hear all everything that Ness said, but. What I picked up was that everything in life is rituals, right? And what what I picked up this past two years that has sat quite strongly with me is the fact that my culture and how I was brought up is um, is very very deeply ingrained in my body, and I do believe that people who move to different countries would may probably have the same and how important they are. Um, just take, for example, for me, something that's been really, uh, that I've missed with these um, cultural rituals that we have is uh, around Christmas in Sweden, how we start four weeks before Christmas, like it's every weekend and it's just, everything is about that day and we start so early and, and that has, I haven't had that now for many years. And I didn't realize how, how, um, how deeply that was sat with me and how I actually, how much love and uh, community it is around having those rituals for us, um, celebrating Christmas through winter time. <laughs> um, so, coming to another country where everything is uh, basically the opposite um it was hard to keep those rituals going in the same manner and when it didn't feel the same it didn't feel like it was doing the same either um so trying to create different types of rituals that work work with the uh, with the country that i'm in was uh, <laughs> has definitely been a challenge but yeah, I've been doing other things to keep me connected. And I, I brought this up the other day about having having my morning coffee, which is what we know in the yogic world. It's a, it's a stimulant, but drinking it in a soulful way and with the right intention, it hasn't had that impact on me. And it helped me keep connected to to my family and to my culture that has been cultivated uh, through my my grandmother and my mother and how we enjoy these times together um so those are definitely rituals that has been and will be sacred for me in um more of a a spiritual ritual i um sadly i haven't I haven't been in this place where I could actually develop a little bit more of those um, as of for the past few years have been very much about remembering where I'm from to stay grounded. So I haven't actually been able to cultivate um, any, any rituals for myself that might be more connected to the, the spiritual sacred ceremonies that we uh, we're talking about here as well. Uh, thank you, thank you, Sophie. You know, um, I can I can really hear you, and I feel that um, 
I can really relate to you because I'm from France. And basically what happened is, you know, when I came here in Australia, uh, everything was so different. And uh, my first New Year's Eve dinner, I was served peanuts and then a cold sausage after <laughs> midnight. And I'm like, is, it, is that it? <laughs> and the French, we, we love the beautiful food, you know, we pay a lot of money, we, we, we make beautiful decoration. And it was, and here I was in Australia, it was all about the cocktails and drinking as much as possible and no food really, you know, chips and I will remember looking at those tables going, is that, is that it? Anyway, um, and then, you know, really for a long time having this sense of separation inside of me, the French side and the, um, the Aussie side. And um, so at some point I could feel, you know, I did um, a mandala and it was a heart mandala. And then it brought me together. Like I have only one heart, I'm, I'm one, and I'm one who has all these possibilities. And, um, and then I met this lady, this French lady, who, who she keeps doing all the French things very much in her family and those ritual, you know, to not wait on some, someone else. Because when we are alone, away from it, if we want to have it, we're gonna have to do it. And you know, and it's not just that, it's the same for everything in life. If you want to have something, you're just going to do it. Don't go and wait for somebody else to do it. So I, I can, uh, you know, and I started to do, <clears throat> we started to do our French Christmas dinner together and doing a few more things. And now if I want something French, you know, I'll just do it. And um, so that's, I can really, you know, relate to you and see how, um, you know, how much, Possibly we have in ourselves, but often we, we kind of sit on the side and wait for somebody else to do it. And then next, what I really want to bring is the fact that uh, what I find is so important in life within the ritual is how to live life as a ritual, you know, as a prayer. And so it's not really, it's almost not what really what you do. I mean, what we do is important, but it's the quality of what we do and how we do it. So what is this quality of sacredness that we want to bring to our life? And basically, you know, the sacredness in, in the ordinary is what makes the ordinary extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And it gives us this dimension, you know, this extra dimension where we connect it to so many other realms. And because we can't see it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean it's not there. So the rituals, I, I just would like to talk about rituals that have really changed my life. And uh, same as Michelle is having a morning ritual and having prayers, you know, because as a Catholic, I was brought up and I went to Catholic school, but then for a long time, I had a lot of um, duality and I left, you know, but my family was going to church every week, but there was a lot of things I couldn't connect with. So um, recently, you know, I've connected again to prayer and to morning ritual and to really, um, you know, say who I am now to bring my future self in my present. And uh, so that's been very important and bringing and, you know, see who comes to me. And I've had all these goddesses, feminine, divine energy come to me. Lately, I have I've had um, I've had Isis come to me. And so she's here you know with the kundalini and um so there's snake skin and you know she's speaking the truth and so she has come to me to give me that strength you know and so she's here in this piece of wood becoming this enormous strength and power into my life into the life of the people that are around me you know connect to that as well to speak our truth so that's how powerful things can be, you know, uh, from there is nothing and there's nobody around to, yes, there is, Isis is here with us. The Kundalini energy is alive in us. And the Kundalini energy is not just within our body, you know, the next stage, and that's where we, it's so important, the book that we're bringing to, to the world is from our body, we connect to the, to the universe, to the cosmos. And our Kundalini energy, you know, bring magic to the world and we can bring that. So, um, yeah, so that's been quite amazing. Uh, and I speak a lot of that in my book, you know, 
shamanism and um, bush art and just picking up a piece of wood on, a, on, on the floor in the forest and then making it something fully different. You know, I've got a, I've got a um, phoenix and my phoenix has his wings closed until two weeks ago. And it's like, okay, phoenix has to have the, the wings open now. And I feel like I'm opening my wings, you know, at the same time with the book. And all of this is happening in my life as well. So, um, yeah, so they, you know, these rituals, the prayers and the sacredness of what we do every day is so important. And the quality, the quality, you know, I was talking about yesterday, you know, how we treat ourselves is how we treat everything and everyone, the world, the earth, our friends, you know, but it's always to go and, and have this quality within us that is so important. So I will stop for now and we, we come again and I'll tell more story about rituals and ceremony, but um, yeah, this has changed my life and I'm so happy to share it with you here now and in the book. Tomorrow you'll be able to buy the book from 9 a.m. in Australia. So who wants to go and talk about any story, you know, of rituals that is uh, changing your life? I'd love to follow on from that, Annabelle, because you triggered in me a few thoughts. First of all, I'd love to pick up on the thread that's been woven through around, um, you know, relocation into a different country. And although this is not my experience, I mostly grew up in Australia. I was born, born overseas. But what I want to speak to is about bringing ritual into families and into children's lives as well. Because wherever the land is that we're on, and whatever the seasons that we're traveling with, you know, it's really beautiful to to bring that sense of ritual and connection in. And so in, in my family, we, we follow an anthroposophical uh, approach, which is um, my children go to a Steiner school. So we have we have a variety of ways that we honor that every um, season is a, is a ceremony and a celebration. Uh, they do that in within their school system. But here at home too, we have an altar space that uh, during the change of the seasons, we put different items that relate to to, to the different seasons. And, um, you know, that can be as elaborate or as simple as you would like it to be, but it's a beautiful way so that when the children wake up, they they get to receive the new energy of the change of the seasons. Um, so I think one of the beautiful things about ceremony and ritual is that we get to to leave like a trail of breadcrumbs if you like through our life that reminds us to come back to that connection to our environment to ourselves to the divine and to the elementals that we're connected into and this allows us some way to land in our bodies and in our sacred selves so when we're displaced from our countries or when we're um, displaced from our families or whatever it is that may be occurring in our life we have some of our own anchor points that helps us to root in and to, and to keep the channel open you know so one is the rooting in and the other is to to open so that the the full frequency of all the energies that are available can come through us and to us. Um, so one thing I also want to make a distinction of um, that, that I see and that I, I bring into my trainings. So my trainings is the feminine embodiment training and we actually do a whole module around rituals and ceremony. And I'd like to make a distinction, um, or this is what I do with my training anyway, between rituals and ceremonies. Um, in rituals, rituals are again those sort of structural breadcrumbs that we leave on our path to remind us to come back to our center, back to our path. And that can be our seasonal rituals, it can be our rituals that we have for honoring who we are as a woman, um, whether it's giving our blood back to the earth, whether it's um, connecting in with full moon cycle and full moon um, circle and ceremony or new moons, uh, the energy of the new moon. There's all these different practices that we can use. We can bring in the elements to assist us, call in the spirit of air, the winged ones. We can call in the element of fire when we need to transform and um, burn through and purify and connect to our passion. We can draw on all these energies 
So our rituals are the little habitual, conscious habitual things that we weave into our lives. You know, so Sophie was speaking about the ritual of coffee, whatever those little physical anchor points are that enable us to drop into deep presence, deep connection, and allow us to connect to our intention of who we are in this moment, what we choose, how we choose to direct our life. Um, so that is ritual. And then for me, there's ceremony. Now ceremony, uh, although often in, in our cultural context, ceremony is often linked with celebration. It doesn't have to be. So, um, you know, we have wedding ceremonies and we have funerals and all of these kind of um, honorings of, of transitions. Um, but ceremony can also be created um, privately and in a group situation which is literally creating a space for us to do transformational work and this is something I'm deeply passionate about it's something we all um, learn and embody in the feminine embodiment training so this is how to how do we weave ceremony how do we create ceremony how do we open ceremony how do we go through that transpersonal space that's in the middle of ceremony and then how do we close the space and honor the space these are different aspects but the transpersonal realm is a realm so transpersonal simply means beyond our personal beyond our small limited ego self into you know the the breadth of what's available to us outside of our small self so um, whether that's our ancestral energies as I say the elemental energies um, we can connect to plant the plant realms the animal realms the spirit realms the angelic realms we, we have access to this transpersonal world um, of resources and connectivity and so when we create ceremony in that way when we call in and deeply anchor into our intention then we give permission if you create the right ingredients you know ceremony I believe is like a cake um, or you know or like a, a feast of any sort savory or sweet where you need to know what some of the ingredients are and then you need to let go, you know, when you put, let's say the cake example, when you put the egg in the cake or the, um, the flour in the cake or the nuts or whatever it is you're putting in, they become something else. And so we create the ingredients of ceremony through sound and through movement and through some of our sacred items. Annabelle, you brought in that beautiful kundalini um, snake item that I'm imagining you created and this is something I'm really passionate about too as an art therapist in my background one of the things that I do creating ceremonial objects and infusing it with our own transformational um, connectivity is really really valuable it anchors us to our time and place a sense of belonging on the land and it also calls on on that that spiritual um, our link to our spirit spirit beings that, that journey with us into physical items and then those physical items get to be in in our sacred space I mean I have many here in the yurt for example and I call them in in different times to work with groups and and they travel with me to to retreats and venues around the world where I where I do my my work and I hold spaces where we get to create those items because it isn't so much the item itself, it's the journey that you go through in forging and uh, alchemizing the item. So sometimes it's the most simple sort of ceremonial prop that is not bling and um, feathers and crystals and all these things that we can embellish these things with, but it is it's seated in absolute powerful intent and that can be more transformative, more potent to us as a ceremonial item than the pomp and show of, of of something you know so um yeah so we put the ingredients of the cake in which is the you know the the sacred items we create the sound that we connect to i'm a big believer in the power of sound and song because when we connect into that we do connect into our ancient lineages our soul lineages as well as our um cultural lineage 
And when we weave these ingredients into the cake, then they, it morphs into a completely different um, entity, if you like. And that transmutation that occurs, that is what I call the liminal realm, where you get to place in, you get to weave these elements of ceremony in, in order to enter a different state of, um, not, I wouldn't say a mental realm, I would say more a, um, so the liminal space is that world between where we are and where we're moving to. So we create this space in the middle, all the ingredients like the cake when it's all mixed together, but it's not yet gone in the oven. It's not yet completed its transmutation. So ceremony is a space where we can create that container to do the transformational work that is not yet baked and finished and known. Our subconscious doesn't necessarily know where we're headed. Um, but we put the ingredients in and we create a space for us to journey in that alchemical process. And then we, you know, through the ceremony, we gain insight as to what is unfolding for us in our life, what it is, um, what the new frequency or new energy is that we're working with. And it's something that our conscious mind doesn't actually know. It is something that is bigger than us, transpersonal, it's bigger than us. Um, so yeah, so that's something that I'm deeply passionate about. Um, it, and it's, it's an interesting one to speak to because I'm sure it's something that all of you have experienced and Michelle, I can completely relate to that, accessing that altered state of consciousness in, in our dance. Um, but we can access that altered state of consciousness. We can, we can access that through like a repetitive movement, like an asana when we're deepening into our breath and we're moving into a transpersonal space. We can do it through our dance when we let go into the space to be the vessel of what's coming through. We can do it through our song and our sound when again we just open up to that raw and pure expression of being. And um, so we have all these ways of opening the channel. And when we do that, then we gain access to a whole lot more resources than when we're in our ordinary, um, practical, day-to-day -day cognitive um, headspace. So, yeah, I've talked quite a lot, so I'd love to hand over. Thank you. I might follow, I might follow on from that, Zoe, because that, yeah, just the way you talked about the ceremonial space was so beautiful. Um, and the stages of the ceremonial space, I, you know, I really relate to that because the dance is very much like that. And yes, yeah, so I guess the way the dance, I work with the dance to connect with those spaces, there's many different ways and different sorts of spaces of ceremony that you can offer, you know, um, it depends on, you know, there could, it could just be a community sharing, you know, I run a dance on Sunday morning that is more about community. So actually creating intention, I find, first of all, setting up an altar um, creates, uh, an altar is a beautiful way to to set up your intention. And, and, and even um, as Ness was saying, an altar in your home, you know, having altars in your home just to set some intention, um, and I do that with the dance each time is to create an altar first to harness the energy and then having an intention. I think the power of intention for ceremony is so important. And especially now that we are getting more and more attuned to energy, you know, as a culture, we are connecting with with the other realms much more easily. The power of intention and what the reason is that you're doing the ritual is so important. Um, so, yes, yeah, so just that sense of, yes, you know, you can be going into a really super deep ceremonial space. Um, you know, I sort of kind of think about the, the dance in different levels. You know, as I said, I do something Sunday morning, which is more of a community togetherness ritual. And but then an intention like the new mood, the mood, working with nature is a beautiful also way of, of helping us connect with the elements and yeah, so like a new moon, a new moon ceremony where we, you know, use work with the moon to set new intentions for the cycle. And then the full moon is all for me, it's all about purifying and cleansing and healing and connecting with our own healing energy. And I'm actually running a 
a full moon dance tonight online <laughs> to celebrate the book launch and to harness the energy. So this, this idea of the ceremony, so having intention is so powerful and to magnetize what it is that we are after in our ceremony. Um, you know, I just, I just, I just recall, I, tr I actually made a film called Dances of Ecstasy many, many years ago where I traveled the world um, exploring how different cultures connect with the spiritual dimension through, through dance and rhythm. And I remember being in Africa uh, where they do the spirit possession rituals. And of course, that's a super, super talking about different depths of ceremony. That was uh, a, a very, very powerful ceremony where the, where the initiates go into trance and they connect with spirit and the spirit comes in and offers information for the community. I was absolutely amazed at the altar that they created, which is, of course, with with ritual sacrifice, a chicken or um, and when I when I saw the altar for the ritual where they feed the gods, the, the purpose of the altar is to actually bring to connect with spirit. It was so powerful, I had to turn away. And that's where I realized the power of how we approach ritual and ceremony and, and the, the reason we do it. And so those ceremonial objects are so important for the what kind of ritual you are doing. Um, and yes, yeah, so, so sometimes for a full moon ritual dance, for example, which can be really access very powerful, deep a very deep dance journey, kind of similar to the spaces, Zoe, that you were speaking about, is, is a, is a dif different kind of intention. So, you know, when you set your intention and work with the elements like the full moon, you can have a, such a transformational, ex you know, experience. I think you can, I mean, I know for me in the dance, in ceremony, that you can connect with your that, those universal healing forces inside you that can heal cancer, that can heal anything. And the ceremony and the ritual has that power to help you harness those, I, I guess, those deep healing f forces that are within us that we can use to heal, to create change, to transform. And yeah, working with the intention and the ceremony just really, really helps with that. So um, yeah, I will stop there for now. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Um, it what you're talking about reminded me of a photo that I saw. Um, I think I was barely a year old and it was a photo that of me dancing. So, and you know how we talked about it in another round table discussion that children are so grounded. It feels like dance is kind of very natural for us to really ground. And it, how it, we kids already know how we can connect. And dance has taken me through that. like. If um, I would be a dancer, if I was, you know, a, a teacher, or because it just comes natural, I would dance. I couldn't even stop myself, even if I'm in the mall and I hear music and it just connects with me. It I resonate with it. I can't help myself dance. So, dance is is such a good way to really connect with the spiritual realm. And going back to what Zoe and Sophie said about the ceremony too, I hope just kind of works together. Um, Sophie, don't feel bad because we celebrate in the Philippines, we celebrate Christmas in September. We start playing Christmas music in September. The moment there's a burr in the month, it's um, it becomes uh, Christmas. So and when I lived in the US, that's when actually I became, I felt more Filipino than ever when I was, you know, as Zoe said, this uh, relocated or dislocated and you, you need to connect back to that. And so when I came back, I actually felt um, my, my father died when I was in the US. And so the call for my land calling me back home was so strong. I left everything. I just left everything and came back home. And that's actually when I felt my spiritual journey really began. And so I'm here now. Um, it's all, I love how you said about the ceremony connecting us back to our ancestors, connecting us back to who we really are. I am doing also just intuitively tuning into, okay, um, when the full moon is, and let's just put it this way, I'm the only one who, let's, you know, 
into the spiritual thing. So like my partner and my son, they're just like, what is she doing? <laughs> I would put on, you know, a white dress and um, I want to be in a part of the house where there, the moon is shining. So I would be in front of the house. And of course there would be sometimes cars passing by and I just, I didn't care. So, and it, it always has to have music in it and drumming music that my feet would just really feel like connected to the ground and maybe my crystals will be there. Sometimes it's not and be water and sometimes it's not. And oh, just giving me goosebumps because uh, I, no one has really taught me how to do that. And so I just kind of just jumped into it and say, okay, yeah, this feels right. And I also need to release it because right now we have the super full moon tomorrow. I'm already feeling it. And I don't know what to do with all this energy that I'm feeling and I need to get it out. And dance has really been like, yeah, let's shake that off. Let's get the Kundalini, you know, running through our spine. It kind of feels like it's the only way you cannot not do it. I know you resonate with this. Um, did you want to jump in, Sophie? Well, I, I do really resonate with, um, with what you said in the beginning, how you become very strongly sense of wanting to go back home and how all of that just like, all right, so that was there for a reason and it's part of me and it's part of who I am and what I do in my life. Um, not necessarily that that has to be stagnant like of course we change and we find ways to to incorporate what we brought with us into a different way and we change it around a little bit and make it our own but yeah it's um it's it's very new for me as I up until my 30th birthday I've never really been away from home so this has been 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 quite the journey to find how I stay connected to home but still take in the new culture from this country <laughs> and as Annabelle said like it's not the same <laughs> I did a midsummer dinner and I put flowers everywhere and candles and how we like set the table and set the intention and everyone who came in they're like wow this is so magic is this what you do every time I was like yeah and sometimes we do it just every week for a Sunday dinner because we love sitting down just eating <laughs> so it's very different but yeah also the dancing I um I think that's that's really beautiful and um I think coming into um, the practice of yoga and asanas and, and meditation and how we, it started with like, sit down, sit still, be still. But the more I got into it, I'm just like, no, I need to move. <laughs> I need to move these energies and I need to, I need to dance. And sometimes I need to sing and, and get all the, all the, the energy and the, the noises out as well as a big release. So yeah, I can, I can definitely relate to all of you. One thing that I do want to add is um, <clears throat> what has become more important to me is actually the nighttime rituals that I have for myself. I was very, very much focused on the morning rituals for, for a long time. I still have them in, in, um, in some degree but the nighttime ritual for me to have a good night's sleep because I do have a lot of dreaming and I do visit visit places in my sleep um so I like to have a good good nighttime ritual where I just look after myself and prep myself for bed um cleanse the energy that's been latched on for the day and yeah and just get myself ready and I've noticed it makes a big difference. And what came to me on the reason why is because you would like to finish your day the way you want to start it. Um, and that comes from training horses as well. Like when you train young horses or retraining older ones, is that you want to leave them with a feeling that 
the way that you want to start the next session with them so that they have have a good sense um so that made everything make more sense <laughs> there's a lot of senses that to me make um to have a good nighttime routine because then that sets you up for the next day and then you have more more uh, clarity for that and hopefully more energy to get your morning morning rituals going as well yeah I just want to <laughs> actually Sophie I love I love how you speak about the nighttime rituals because often it's easy to do the Netflix and do other things like that at night to relax and I think what you've said is so beautiful and it just brings to mind the 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 the, the, the ritual of gratitude which a lot of people are talking about is how that's a beautiful thing to end the day with and to begin the day with you know like what are you grateful for in your day what went well as well as what didn't go well it's good to review that as well but to have gratitude for what actually went well before you go to sleep and i guess and then when you wake up in the morning like what am i grateful for gratitude is just a game changer for changing shifting ourselves out of that head into the awe. it's incredible what a powerful tool gratitude is to help us as a, as a ritual so i just wanted to add that to your night time yeah, I love that, Michelle and Sophie. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, you know how we we can change. You know, um, and really getting out of what we've done. So you know, I was addicted to television. So I, then I just stopped. You know, I had to stop fully, and um, then you know start to. And just this year, I lived by myself. I started to watch TV again a little bit, and um, you know, and it's been good. Uh, but yes, the evening, you know, and how we put ourselves to sleep is so important. Mm. Um, so, so important. So yes, how we treat ourselves morning, evening, during the day, and how we treat others is it, terribly important. And how we, we do everything is important. How we can bring sacredness, um, you know, in our life uh, can change and can connect us to this different dimension. Uh, the other thing I really wanted to bring in is, you know, to really working with the cycles of the earth and of nature, the seasons and the element and, and the moon. And so how we have this cycle of life, death and rebirth that is present at all time and um, how often we kind of hang on to the old. And so we prevent the new because we holding on so bad, we, we're scared of letting go of the old. And so doing ceremonies with the moon and the cycle of the moon has been really helping me because, you know, I'm Taurus, I've got lots of planets in Taurus, I'm super anchored and change has been quite difficult. So um, the regularity of it, you know, like every two weeks, uh, because really when you're not into that world, it's like, or at New Year, you put new intention, and by the end of January, everything's gone out of the window anyway, you know? So when you work with the moon, it's like every two weeks, there is something, you know? And two weeks goes really quickly, you know? So it's like, okay, there's a full moon, we fool. So we're so full, we have to let go of something. Mm. So what do we have to let go of? And what the moons, the emotions come up, so all these emotions that are coming up for us now with this super full moon, uh, helping us to go in this direction of expansion, you know, new earth and freedom. So what do we need to let go of that stop us from getting that freedom and, and to go into this future? So letting go of that, you know, and then in two weeks, the new moon. So we let go more of what is in a way, and then we bring new intention. And so we roll like that every second week. And there's this, really gentle path you know it, it's not like oh every time you do it it's like an enormous thing like it, it takes you a whole week to recover from it you know like when you start to do it every two weeks it just becomes so part of you that you know it's like okay i'm shedding a little bit for sure i'm shedding that like now it's obvious you know and then i'll shed it again next month <laughs> and then i'll shed it again next year you know so it's not like we do it once and then it's done for life <laughs> not at all so it's this ritual of you know and this um 
Yeah, following the cycle, the same way, you know, with, with a tree, you know, the tree has to plant the roots uh, and then has to grow until it bears the fruit. So it's the same with our businesses. You know, there's so many people they would like to bear fruit. They're all there waiting for the money and they haven't built up anything. They haven't anchored in this earth. What is a business? You know, what, what, how do they feed it? And so they can give fruit and then sell the fruit and get the money back. You know, like there's, there's so much to do. Um, and, and I feel like we, um, I think we talked about it yesterday a little bit, this world we live in where we just take a pill and everything's solved like that. And we lose fully the, you know, the reality of everything is a process. Everything is a process. Everything takes time. We need patience, you know. So I've been working with a shaman and a direction. So, you know, before opening this circle, I opened the direction with the East we call the spirit of the East, the eagle, the higher vision, the fathers and grandfathers following the heart. And then we go to the North and in the North, we call in the spirit of the Goana who help us go through the challenges of life, you know, and cultivate determination, courage, resiliency with authenticity and stillness, patience, and then we call in the spirit of the West, where the mothers and grandmothers help us with one up here, the rainbow serpent, that help us with wisdom and healing. We heal our heart, we shed. It's a snake, shedding, you know? Shed when it's too much, it sheds and then it comes back. So that's why the Kundalini, the energy is so, you know. And then we go to the stars. And in the stars, we call the Waringal Dingo, who help us in the darkness, in the void. What happened when we're in the void? We don't know. And we still got to have faith and trust in ourselves, in our inner knowing that what is right will come to us. We don't have to look for it. We just have to be open to receive. So when we live this life in a way that we open to receive instead of being wanting, wanting, wanting. The energy around what we do is so different. The whole energy of you know wanting and just opening to receive is fully different. Um, so yeah, and the tree of life, you know, where we anchored our roots in the ground, and it's the unconscious that comes up, and then we bear fruit. So, yeah, so all these rituals are so, so important. And it's this process of life, you know. So I can hear the difference, all the young women here today, uh, how there are things that you don't grasp because you're too young for it. It's okay, you know. And then that's the wisdom that we have because we have a lifetime of doing the wrong things maybe, you know. Especially I, did, I had a whole lifetime of... Uh, being in my sabotage, um, you know, uh, and which I talk a lot about in my first book, you know, how it, it was, um, I did a lot of that. And, um, you know, and then I was like, oh, what's happening to my life? Uh, but to realize I created that. And uh, so, okay, so how can I do things different to create something I really want? Um, so, yes. And there is one question in the messages on the Facebook group. Somebody wants to know about rituals around the, the bleeding, the menses. Um, so I, I haven't done that because I'm way over. So I don't know who would like to talk about. Maybe Zoe, I know you'd like to talk about that. So thank you. Your yes. Mm -hmm. I just before moving into that question, just want to presence um, what Annabelle was sharing, um, what she has shared is the Australian Dreaming Medicine Wheel. And all around the world, uh, there are different medicine wheels um, because it relates to the Southern Hemisphere and the Northern Hemisphere. And the way you spin, the way you honour the, uh, the directions mm -hmm. um, in the order that you honour them, the elements that they're connected to, the animal, the spirit animals that they're connected to will be different in every region. And that is absolutely perfect because that is honoring the medicine of the land and the, the space. So I've also been trained in the, in the medicine wheel and we also journey with this in the dreaming, Australian dreaming wheel. Um, so yeah, just coming back to the question of the menstrual, um, there's many things that you can do. 
Um, one very beautiful thing, if you think about our blood, our menstrual blood is our life force and it's, it's um, new life and it's also endings, so beginnings and endings. And when we have our bleed time, we go into the visionary realms. Traditionally, it was a space where we took a sacred pause, um, as also with um, meno pause. It is an opportunity to take the sacred pause when we bleed um, and, to, and to allow that, again, that transpersonal reality to, to meet with us. So we, we stop the busyness of our daily lives and we just come home to ourselves in rest. And replenishment and it's the phase of winter in the medicine wheel where we actually allow ourselves to return back to the earth and rest and so this is a definitely a space for journaling for meditations for lucid dreaming um, for opening to, for ceremony for opening to to guidance and this is the time that actually governs our whole cycle so you know having that rejuvenation and rest is so important so that we've got the chi flow and the um, the magic to to go through the rest of our cycle so um, there's many many things you can use your menstrual blood to paint to um, ceremonially adorn yourself to um, to give back to the earth it, the blood um, our blood holds our own DNA coding and when we mix it with Gaia coding and we return it back to the earth with some some extra water um, we can actually water our sacred herbs and our um, you know I used to love making smoothies from the herbs like the parsley the vibrance that um, my menstrual blood gave to the plant and the plant absorbed that DNA and created its own um, medicine for me to then consume and that's cyclic you know so there's many things I like to sing the directions when when placing my blood in the four directions and sing and sound that into the earth as well um, yeah, using sacred props, not relating so much now to menstrual blood, but um, I just brought this up. So this is just an, um, a drum that I made. Um, and it's important to, you know, like Annabelle shared with her sacred prop, like infuse, create items in your space that infuses your medicine and your energy um, into the space so that when you know we see we swim in a sea of other people's emotions in the world and so little rituals which can be super super simple like starting your day and lighting a candle and bathing the light over yourself or um, greeting the day opening up to the sun you know like placing your body open to the sun and just taking a few moments to really welcome in the solar energies of your day day um, closing the day by resting your forehead on the ground and giving thanks for your day just very simple embodied but spirit filled practices that can take just minutes of your day super super empower, um, important and powerful um, so I know that we're needing to wind up um, yeah so I'm imagining that um, Annabelle's going to ask us to just briefly say um, how to connect with each one of us. So while I'm speaking, I'll just mention that. Um, you can find me at Soul Arts. My business is Soul Arts International. S-O-U-L-Arts.com is my website. And I'll put that in the link as well. And, um, you know, if you're interested in joining our five month, it's, it used to be 10 months, now it's five month feminine embodiment journey certification. Then we learn about ritual, we learn about the medicine wheel, we learn about this, some of these very sacred practices of how to connect to your earth body and be a vessel for the divine feminine. So um, in embodied ways, that's me, I think. Thank you so much, I love this topic. Oh, thank you so much, Zoe. Um, yes, I can, we can see, you know, the experience you have. And before I, I move on to say, you know, what I have to offer for me, I've had this awakening really in the last five years and really with spiritual awakening has been only the last two years. You know, I was saying um, I've got my cards, my Oracle cards, and um, I used to pick a card once a year. You know, like, and now I, I really believe and I connect with the cards and, and I get guidance for myself and for others, which I do guidance uh, live every Monday morning after my Monday, mon uh, Monday meditation in my uh, Facebook group, Women's Soul Circle. And so how it's always 
so um, pinpoint, you know, what people need to know. It's, it's always um, what needs to be said. And um, so, yes, uh, we, we don't know what we don't know. And then it's like slowly letting ourselves know a bit more. And, and then, you know, I had a friend who gave me this book um you know everyday ceremonies and ritual and from there uh when i separated with my husband i did a separation um ritual ceremony and that was beautiful because we separated physically we've been separated for a few months we still live in the same house because we, we stayed good friends and um but when we did this ceremony, after that, the energetic around it really dropped. And we we had the separation went to this next level. And that was beautiful because it really helped me, you know, and him move on to the next stage, which was ha having the physical separation, selling the house and do, letting go of all that we built together. And that was so, you know, you think you, you spend a whole lifetime building something together. And then when it's beautiful, you know, and you, you, you need to go to your next stage, you, you, you know, you have to let it go. Um, and you build on top of that. It's not like you let it go and it's done. You, you just build on top of that. Uh, but the ceremony really helped. Um, so yeah, there are books there, there are you, there's a lot you can do and it's all about giving yourself the permission to do it and you know I was saying that at first all I did was especially with the oracle cards give myself permission and and just experience and connect with myself and and those different powers so yeah so you can connect with me uh, especially on the Facebook group and come every Monday and I do Monday meditation which is more and more a bit of a ascension you know um, meditation and then I have a link tree and I put the, the link for the link tree. I have a, uh, a program will come in November. I will start the program, Awaken the Wild Woman Within, uh, that will be coming in November. So just connect with me. I'm always around and you can subscribe to my newsletter and to all the different things that I have. So you know what I'm up to uh, in the next month. I'll be going away just to visit my family. So um, I have a little break. Um, anyway, it's so nice to be here now. Okay, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Thank you, Annabelle. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I run dance events. I'm based in Sydney and I yeah, run five rhythms dance events. I do dance therapy sessions. I do women's work. Um, the range of work I offer is like weekly classes on Sunday morning in Bondi, uh, Tuesday mornings online, um, to very deep containers. Um, I run small groups of uh, women's groups online. My next series is the Spring Chakra series, uh, which starts in September. And my retreat program is also where we do very deep work um, on the land, in nature. Uh, I've got a Spring Awakening retreat coming up um, in September the 16th to 19th. And yeah, that's a four day program with dance, movement, dance therapy, nature practices, where we deepen our connection with ourself and also what is blossoming. And I also run one on one sessions. Um, you can find me on uh, Radiance Dance Five Rhythms. I also have a link tree, uh, which I'll, I'll share. And and tonight, I'm doing a full moon dance. Um, I'm actually launching a women's five rhythms full moon dance online, which I've been wanting to do for a long time. And I thought doing something for the launch of the book would be awesome. So if you're around tonight at seven o'clock, it's a free offering and the link is in the Facebook page. It'd be lovely to have, have you come in and help celebrate us and just work with the powerful energy that's going on. And we can set a powerful intention. Thank you, Annabelle. Thank you, everyone. It's been really, very nourishing conversation. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> it's also, um, I'm grateful that we created this space to talk about the rituals and ceremonies. And I think it's not talked about it as often as we would. It becomes like part of everything that we do, but it's, it's the smallest thing that really makes us feel so alive in those small little things that we do. Um, I just wanted to be grateful for that for, for, for all of you. 
Um, so I have, um, my website is nestlove.com and I also do coaching calls and healing online and in person. And I do retreats here in the Philippines. So kind of hybrid online and in person, but I'll put, um, I'm on Instagram. So I'll put my link um, in the comments. Thank you all. I feel so blessed to be part of this. Thank you. And Sophie, you need to tell us where you are, where we can find you on IG and on Facebook, because <laughs> you'll be giving something very soon anyway. I will be giving something soon. I am embarking on my on my Kundalini teacher training. So I, um, I'm looking forward to use that as more um, of, in a way, of healing and balancing out diseases in the body. Um, you can find me on Instagram. It's... Uh, it's Swedish <laughs> at this point. It's uh, and I'll I'll send a link because it's a Swedish word, so it basically means the hormone hormone one. <laughs> um, so um, the hormonal one, yeah, that's me. So yeah, I'll I'll share that as well. And thank you so much for this conversation. Even though I came in a little late, I was glad that I made it because. Um, it was really lovely to share the space with all of you. Thank well, you. I'm so happy we all made it here and it's a wonderful conversation. And it's, you know, like the books is one place for us to to share what happened and how we we share, we do life. And, you know, it's really there, I think, to inspire and empower others. And this conversation is, is so good because it shows that we have so much to say we have so much to share you know like and community is so important you know i've been saying my wish for the world is peace love and unity and really community you know after my big change of um divorce leaving my town how you know to to survive in the world you know having community all different community with uh, internet and then live now in Belgium where I live, it's been amazing. And I think, you know, we have all these different little communities. Uh, and I think the book, you know, is that community of um, what we can do. So thank you everyone. And really tomorrow, tomorrow 9.30, you can come in in a Zoom session with us where we're doing the birthing, every happening of the book. And um, we all be, I don't know, reading a bit of, a little bit about our, our book and um, just join. And if you have any question, so um, yeah, that'd be beautiful. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Let's get ready. And, and uh, dancing tonight. tonight. Yeah, dancing tonight with Michelle is probably a very good idea. Yeah. Yes. And at one o'clock today, um, I'm also jumping in. There's a uh, the new a new way of relating in the Great Awakening. So there'll be some men and some women chatting this afternoon at one o'clock as well. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I've been doing a lot with the gin keys, you know. Gin keys have been amazing. Mm. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>